This is part four of my hybrid rolling ball clock series. In this video we will take a look at the chiming sections of the clock. The chiming function requires 12 balls, one for each hour of the day. The balls rest in one of two trays, the trigger tray or the hour tray. It's a little difficult to see the trays on the clock itself, so I've removed some of the components in the 3D model to show it more clearly. This is the area that we want to focus on. The red path shows the hour chime path and the green path shows the trigger ball path. Notice that the paths are not at the same level. To start the demonstration I've placed all 12 balls in the trigger path. The balls all need to eventually move to the top of the clock exiting here or here. That is accomplished by the large toothed wheel on the back of the clock. If you remember from part two, the wheel is driven by an arm and paw connected to an offset hub on the last gear in the gear train. The arm strokes every minute. Right here. And it engages the ratchet teeth on the wheel. The wheel slowly rotates until the pawl changes direction. There are 60 teeth on the wheel so the wheel makes one full revolution per hour. The second pole, this one, then engages the wheel to keep it from rotating backwards. This is important when the wheel is full of balls. The wheel contains 12 ball sockets. 11 of the sockets are at the same radius. These sockets pick up the hour chime balls. One socket is on a slightly larger radius. That, ball, that socket picks up the trigger ball. I'm going to manually rotate the wheel until the trigger ball is picked up and brought to the top. got the ball. Here it is. When the trigger ball leaves the wheel, it rolls down this ramp and drops through this hole. It then rolls across a small seesaw which is linked to the release lever. That release lever becomes important for the hour chime balls. The ball then continues on, rolling over a chime lever here that is connected to the strike. When the ball leaves the lever, the strike falls back down, striking the disc. A single strike indicates one o'clock. The ball then travels down the ramp until it stops against this gate. Let's see that happen. If we rotate the clock around to the back you will see that the wheel features a cam shape. This small wheel is forced against the cam by this arm and spring. That arm rotates about this center and bridges through the clock to the mechanism that operates the gate. Right here. As the cam rotates, it opens the gate, allowing the ball 
to roll into the hour chime tray. That ball gets picked up by the wheel. It's the only one available, so the wheel just continues to rotate, picking up another trigger ball. When the chime ball emerges, it rolls to a stop within this metering device. The meter spaces the chimes so that you can clearly count each hour. When the trigger ball emerges, it rolls down and across the little seesaw, which in turn actuates the release lever. Here. The weight of the chime ball tips the meter, dropping the ball into this little labyrinth. After releasing a ball, the meter tips back down because of this counterweight. The release lever is driven back into this small notch in the meter, temporarily locking it in position, awaiting the next ball in the line. The trigger ball crosses the chiming lever striking one. The hour ball rolls across the seesaw and on down to the chiming lever striking two. It is now two o'clock. The wheel and cam turn, the gate opens, and the ball moves into position to be picked up again. clock is set to chime 11 o'clock. This time let's let the clock do the work. This same cycle continues until it's 12 o'clock. We'll look at that in the next and final video in the series.